Hello everybody, how you doing? I'm out in the shop for a few minutes. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched my Chaos 2.0 video and commented on it. Wow, that's just been great. There's been so many awesome comments. Uh, I even got a comment that gave me an idea for Chaos 3.0. Now I really hate to just keep just keep hammering this one style blank, but the guy gave me a great idea and it's gonna make an even cooler looking blank than these. And I think it's something you guys might like and might enjoy. So I might work on it off and on here and there and just put something together as time goes on. But uh, the biggest comment that I had is, I wanna see it turned. When are you gonna turn one of them? That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna show you guys these blanks and I want you to vote. I want you to give me two votes. Number one, I want you to pick a blank. And number two, I want you to pick a kit. I've got a number of kits laid out. And I'm gonna basically tally up the votes that I get, the, 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 the number one kit and the number one blank, and we're gonna put them together and we're gonna turn them. So let me show you what I've got lined up for you. You've already seen the blanks. And the way we're gonna do this is we've got the longer blanks. We're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you can choose L1 through L14. And these are 1, 2, 3, 4. They'll be S for short, 1 through 14. Let me give you a close look at these blanks. There is L1 through 4. There is L5 through 10. Here's L11 through 14. And here are S1 through 4. Hopefully I pause long enough or if, if you wanted to pause your video and take a closer look, you can. I want you in the comments, put down S or L, 1 through 14 or 1 through 4. Let me know your blank choice. And let me show you a couple of pink kits. I just kind of dug around, picked out some different ones, but I'll show you the kits I got here. To start off with, I have a couple of mechanical pencil blanks, and I really like these. And if I use the mechanical pencil blanks, they'll have to be with the larger blanks uh, because I probably will do a one-piece pen. I really like, as a matter of fact, my daily carry, it's beat to heck and back, but my daily carry is a mechanical pencil uh, one-piece blank, and I really like this. So I've got two of these. I've got one in chrome, and I've got another in gunmetal. So you can pick which one you like better if you want to go with a mechanical pencil. I've got a Sierra. This would be ideal for the smaller tubes, but if somebody saw a longer one that they liked, I'd be willing to cut one in half and uh, make a Sierra. And I'll even let you uh, pick the half you want. <laughs> Here is a chrome. This is a standard slimline pen. And here's a standard slimline pen uh, in gunmetal. Now uh, this one, yeah, it said no trans, but I did put a transmission in there. I bought a bunch of them. So I can make either one of those. And if you choose one of these, uh, leave me a note whether you want to see a one piece or a two piece. I have this one. This is a beautiful pen. Now I blew this one up, so I will be basically using two new tubes. But this is, um, this is called a, um, oh shucks, what's the name of that thing? Slimline pen and pencil kit. I can't remember what, what it's called, but I hope you can see that. Take a look at the filigree on there. I don't remember what they call this particular kit, but it's beautiful. I would make that one as a two-piece kit. I would not one-piece that one because the center ring is, is absolutely beautiful. And to throw a little spice in there, I've got a seam ripper kit. So I'd be willing to make a seam ripper kit. So everybody loves to make choices and, and, and decide on things. Give me yours. I'm going to give it a little bit and I'll go through and I'll tally up everything I get. I'll give you guys the results in one of these update videos and we'll get started uh, drilling and gluing a tube in one of these blanks and we're going to turn what you asked for. This is, this is the crowd favorite. So let me know what you think. The next thing I've been wanting to do and I'm going to get started on tonight is I bought this a while back. This is called the Magic Skew. It's made by T-Shadow and Company. Let me flip around and show you this. I didn't want to do a video right away because I wanted to get a chance to use this and I've had a chance not only to use it, but I had a guy over to my shop and I taught him how to turn pins and I taught him how to turn with this tool. There we go, www.tshadow.com. This is the SH1 and the MS1 uh, is the, um, the tool post. Now he makes a longer one, a longer handle and a longer tool post too. So, you know, you have options there, but uh, this uses a round cutter. Notice the bar, how it is 
hey, there you go. I believe those are 30 degree angles or 33 degree. That I'm gonna have to look that up. But this lets you take the tool and lay it on the tool rest at an angle. Normally you have that large flat surface against your blank. When you take it to an angle, it, it minimizes the amount of cutter on your blank. So it's kind of like a skew where you just have that one little area cutting your cutting against your blank. So I was gonna do a video on this, turn a blank and just kind of talk about it and show you guys um, the tool and, and what I think of it. Most of you who know me know that I love high speed steel tools. Um, I think it's a personal preference. I think it has a lot to do with how I started. When I started turning, I didn't have access to carbide. I didn't even know about carbide tools. Uh, and I started with high speed steel and I had to learn how to handle them, how to sharpen them uh, and just how to use them. And for me, you know, I always go back to the high speed steel. You know, I, I used this for a while on a couple of pins. And what I found I, I, I've done, and I've talked about it in videos, is I got that muscle memory. And muscle memory on a, on a high speed steel tool is anchor the tool on the tool rest, okay? A, B is get the bevel, ride the bevel, and C is cut. So you turn the tool into the blank and you begin cutting. That's in my mind. So high, and when you get with a carbide tool, you go in straight like this and you wanna keep it straight and run it back and forth along the tool rest. Well, what happens is my muscle memory kicks in and I tend to drop the tool. Now, I like the fact that I can angle this one. That takes care of that cut for me. Uh, but you don't ride the bevel with these. And when I anchor it, I have a bad habit of dropping that tail into that tool. And those of you who use carbide know that that is a no-no. That is catch heaven. And uh, God, I have a lot of trouble with that. But but I do like the tool. Don't get me wrong. I really do like this tool. I like that it's compact. If I want to travel to a club and do a demo, this is a great tool for that. And I want to use it more. I want to get more practiced at this because I get a lot of questions from people about the difference between carbide and the difference between high-speed steel. And I want to be able to truthfully answer those questions. I don't want to tell you something based on what I think or what I've heard. So we're going to work with that and probably do a quick video on that. Well guys, I started out this video with a whole lot of talking and I'm gonna start ending this video with uh, showing you guys the latest glue up. I just started. We're gonna have a little fun with this and see just how it turns out. That's not Chaos 3.0. Chaos 3.0, if it happens, uh, will be another blank or two down the road. Uh, this is just another idea that hit me today and I thought, eh, let's give it a try and see what I can do. So I'm just having a little fun right now that's all that matters, and we'll see if it turns into anything cool. I'm gonna turn a handle for the end of my lathe, and I just made this insert out of a piece of Alumalite, and I tapped it to 7 16ths uh, NF20, and it uh, fits perfectly on there. I left it really rough so that the epoxy would have something to stick to, but it threads on there really, really nice. And my good buddy, Mark Tabaka, sent me this blank. I like it because it is gold and blue. That's the local high school colors the team that my kids play for. Uh, so this is gonna make a great handle. What I'm gonna do is uh, we will get our hole drilled in the end of there. We'll get that uh, uh, insert epoxied in here when we're done. And we're gonna turn a cool little handle out of this. I don't know if I'm gonna cut it in half and turn a, a half a handle, maybe a round handle, or if I'll go ahead and turn a longer handle. I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, until I get it on the lathe, uh, I'll let the wood speak to me and tell me what it wants to do. Let me show you guys what I've been working on. This is the handle for my lathe. I think it's turned out really nice. It looks really, really cool. And it's ready to go. There's already a hole in the end of it that I can epoxy um, the insert I made into. I just need to finish the CA, buff it out with some micro mesh, part it off, and epoxy it in. Well guys, I've been super busy tonight. Let me show you a couple of things I got going. Here's my lathe handle. It's got my CA finish on it. I just need to micro mesh it. It'll be ready to go. Over here, I've got my second glue up on my new blank. And then I'm over here working on this. My daughter came in and said that she could not turn her shower on. And it looks like um, this, is, this needs a new um, set nut or set uh, screw in there. And I have uh, a loose screw on the uh, shower, the nozzle to where that thing is just spinning. So I'm gonna put some WD in here, loosen it up, get that one out. I've got another one of those that I bought not too long ago, the little set screws, and we'll take a screwdriver in, we'll tighten up the shower, and we should be in good shape. I got that set screw out of there finally. I had to resort to the good stuff. 
I soaked the inside and outside with PB Blaster, finally got it out, and I've put a new one in there. And this one, instead of using an Allen wrench, it uses a flathead screwdriver. And I shot a little WD in there so it goes in and out really nice and easy. So I'm going to head in the house and I'm going to tighten up the, the uh, faucet. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and hopefully we got this thing fixed. I got the shower handle fixed. Everything's working great. That PB Blaster did the trick. It broke loose everything in there. All the, I guess the water, hard water, you know, whatever. It gets that lime in there. It broke all that loose. I got the old set screw out, threw it away. Didn't even want to try it. Put that new one in. It's working great. I just finished this. This is the new knob for my lathe. I've got the insert epoxied in there. So we're gonna let this sit overnight. Tomorrow we'll attach it to the lathe and uh, we should be good to go. That's pretty much it for me tonight, guys. Um, I, like I said, I did two glue ups on a blank over there. Uh, I've got some more stuff that needs to happen to that one, but it's not gonna happen tonight. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a great evening and I will see you again very, very soon.